<laughs> will, will your philosophy on that ever change? And, and no. How about your momentum coming into this fight? You have a five-fight win streak coming in. You're facing a guy that has some serious power in Robbie Lawler. What do you assess from him as far as his power in this fight and your confidence coming off your win streak? Um, I haven't watched too much on Robbie uh, this camp. I've, I've focused on my own training like always, and I feel very confident. My training has been better than ever. Um, I'm very confident I'm going to win in the first round or, or finish the fight in uh, you know, either KO or submission at some point in the fight. Did you, did you go back? Where do you think the winner of your fight between you and Warrior will be on the scale of the welterweight after the fight? Where do I think do you I'm going to be? Do you think the winner of your fight will be close to a championship fight? Or? Yeah, yeah, probably. I think any any fight in the top ten, if you have a, a great performance, is going to launch you up towards the top. So that's what I plan to do. Do you plan on going to middleweight at some point? Uh, yeah, I want to be the champ in 170 for a while, but I, I'm going to challenge other weight classes. You'd rather you know. be champ at 170 than go to 185? Yeah. yeah. Eventually, not like win the belt and leave. I mean, right. I, I want to. I want to make my. Uh, I want to, you know, mark my territory here at 170 and, you know, and then start exploring other areas. If you want to do that, what is the plan going forward? Do you just keep taking fights until George kind of ends his reign, or how does this work? Yeah. yeah, you just keep taking fights and, you know, one step at a time. Are you, you came in for some criticism from some quarters after your last win. Other people thought you just executed a game plan. After that win, you seemed to just shrug off that criticism. Afterwards, when you went home, did it bug you in any way? I mean, you, you won the fight, you, you did your job. Did it irk you to have somebody criticize the way you did it? Um, there's always going to be criticism. Uh, that fight in particular has been the most I've been criticized, but uh, it really didn't bother me too much. I don't follow the media too often or, and uh, things like that or what, what's being said about me. I've I really just been working hard in the gym and... You know, I'm going to put on a great performance this Saturday, and you can expect that. Part of the criticism came from your boss at, at the UFC. I mean, did that did that leave a mark? Not really. I, I you know, I, you know, I heard what he had to say that night, and you know, I, I, I listened to it, and you know, I understand it, and I'm going to try to find a balance that makes everyone happy. Yeah. Are you willing to take more risk this time around against Lawler? I don't think I don't think it was about me taking risks. I think it was about Allenberger taking risks that he wasn't willing to take. And do you think uh, Lawler is going to take more risk? Yeah, I mean, uh, Robbie's one of those guys that comes to fight every time, and you know he's going to leave it all out there. And you know, I think a guy like that is going to make an exciting fight with me. Where do you rank Robbie in terms of striking in the division? You face Carlos Condit, one of the best in the division. Where would you put Robbie right now in the welterweight division? In just pure striking. Oh, uh, he's yeah, he's one of the best in the world, without a doubt. You know, he's not fighting at the top of the UFC for no reason. Uh, he's got some impressive KOs in his last few fights, so he's up there. What are your thoughts about the main event uh, Saturday? Yeah. Uh, I think George is going to dominate his fight. Um, I think it'll be a great performance. Rory, do you think that you're just cursed to always be compared to George? I mean, if you if, if you win the 170 pound title, it just seems like that comparison will always be there. Like, how good is he compared to George? You know, what did he do compared to George? Or do you think that over time, and, and once George retires, that you'll be able to, to leave your own mark? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a young guy, and you know, I've, I've, I've been brought up behind George in, in the last few years, so I understand where it comes from, and and uh, I get it. It's it's a part of it. it. It happens to all young guys who train with uh, you know legends of the sport. And uh, all I could do is basically keep taking a step forward in my own career, um, mark, putting you know, putting my own footprint in the sport and becoming a legend myself. And you know, and then one day, hopefully, a, a younger guy under me coming up uh, can be measured up to me. It's just it's just the way this combat sports are. Does it does it put more weight on your shoulder to have all those expectations uh, to be no. the next GSP stuff like that? No, I'm not trying to be the next George. I'm just trying to be the best I can be. And you, you talked about it earlier, but you plan on uh, moving up weight class. Mm -hmm. At some point, do you have difficulties to make weight at 170? No, because not at all. Important. Not at all. I don't have any difficulties making this weight. I have a good uh, nutrition program that I follow, and uh, I'm healthy when I fight. Um, the, the whole 185 thing is just about challenging myself, um, if it ever comes to the point where I'm dominating my division. 
which I plan on doing. But, uh, you know, I'm just taking one step at a time, and hopefully I'll get there one day. Are, are you kind of impatient now? Are you uh, eager to have this championship fight sooner rather than later? Um, I think it'll come when, uh, you know, when, when God plans on it to come. So I'm just doing everything I can to, to work towards it. A good friend of yours, Mike Ricci, was cut from the UFC. Obviously, you're familiar with the business side of this sport, but uh, what did you think of, of that sort of business side coming into things? Yeah, it was unfortunate. I mean, I, I really think that Mike is one of the top talents in the world at 155, and I, I really believe he'll be back, and, you know, it, it might be a blessing in disguise in the long run uh, for him. Uh, I, I believe in him, and I think he'll be a champion one day. You've been gunning for that rematch with Carlos Condit for a while. The timing just didn't work out on this one, but were you disappointed at all you didn't get Carlos? Is that still something that is, like, deep inside you want that fight at some point? It was a disappointment, for sure. I, I uh, definitely would like to to challenge him again. I think, uh, I think I've come a long way since that fight, and I'd like to prove it to myself more than anything that I, I've uh, overcome that obstacle and, uh, and beat him. Um, I believe it'll happen in the near future. I think Carlos isn't going anywhere. I think he's one of the top talents at welterweight for a long time, and I think uh, I think we'll definitely have that fight. You see him beating Matt Brown? Yeah, I definitely. I'm confident that that Carlos will have a great performance against Matt. That kind of sets it up perfectly. If everything works out right, you would have both wins. That yeah, both we'll see. You know, uh, I really can't control any of that. I just. Uh, Really just focused on Robbie Lawler on Saturday night. How much work did you and George do together for this, for this, your respective fight? Yeah, you know, we both were fighting a lefty, so it was, it was good. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of good uh, talk and, and training methods that we sh shared. So it was a great camp for both of us. We're, we're both feeling very sharp. That's different than last time, right? I mean, you guys didn't work as much together before your fight with Jake, is that right? Uh, it was more of a scheduling thing, you know, uh, different different fight times, you know, leaving, you know, uh, and then strategizing for different style of opponents. So um, that's all. Have you got to hmm? have you got to work out in the uh, full size octagon that he had in there? And what do you think that gives uh, the TriStar athletes an advantage in their upcoming fights? Yeah, it's great to have that that uh, UFC cage in uh, in our, you know in our gym. It's been it's been nice being able to visualize in there the different surface that we get to work on and you know it's good to have experience on it because it's not the same surface as a regular gym mat so uh, it's interesting. Do you ever worry that you'll be forced into a position to make a decision to move up in weight class if you're dominant over the rest of the welterweights? Do I feel I'll be forced? Do you, do you ever worry about that day when you're forced to either fight GSP or you have to move up? I'm not worried. I'm. Uh, Taking it one step at a time. I'm pretty confident anywhere I fight against anybody. What do you normally walk around at? Uh, about 210. You've uh, spoken in the past about kind of learning the fine art of scaling it back so that you don't overtrain. I'm curious if you know if you compare yourself today to the way you used to say train a year ago. I mean, what would you say is the biggest difference? Uh, be more relaxed. Uh, more emphasis on. Uh, on taking care of my body uh, before and after workouts, throughout the days and throughout the weeks, you know, it's a lot of work maintaining the body and and eating right and and, and training right. Like some some days you feel uh, stiff and you come in and just for no good reason your partner you know cranks your neck and pops something. You know, it just sometimes freak stuff happens when you're uh, training as hard as we do. So it's just a matter of being focused on being relaxed and. And, uh, taking care of the body, and then you know, if, if stuff happens, and that's what happens. You know, we're not we're not we're not dancing here. It's it's a, it's a hard sport to train for, and it's it's a fine balance of of staying injury free, but getting you know as good as you can. Between you know maybe the criticisms that Dana made of your last fight, but then also just fighting smart, but. I mean, there's got to be a part of you, right, that's sort of defensive about it, saying, like, I'm a young guy in my career, I'm going to have a long career. Taking punches just doesn't make sense for me in, at this point in my career. I mean, was there that part of you that was kind of like, no, he's wrong? I felt that I was doing the right thing. I, I was setting Jake up for, uh, you know, a knockout shot or setting him up for other things. But um, he, uh, you know, he was 
sitting back and, and, and getting uh, jabbed and getting kicked and, and uh, you know, he was just sitting out in the open getting picked apart and um, maybe there was a couple of things that could have been more offensive from, that I learned from, but uh, I don't think most of the criticism should, should fall on me um, because I understand the technical side of things. Um, you know, a lot of people in this sport that are, that criticize it don't actually understand the amount of technique that goes into uh, striking or uh, or just the whole MMA thing. So I, I really think a lot of it falls on Jake's decision to sit back and get picked apart. Do you think he just he didn't know what to do with you? Uh, I think he did. I think he's just I think he, he froze uh, up. He froze. You know, I, I think I froze him and um, wasn't willing to uh, engage after that. Going back to back fights with DJ and Jake talking a lot of trash beforehand, saying a lot of crazy things, kind of amping up the intensity. This time, Robbie, he's more about action, doesn't really say a lot. Do you prefer an opponent that just wants to fight, doesn't really need to trash talk you to get hyped up for a fight? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't require as much energy when you're doing interviews and stuff, having to hear what your guy said and them expecting an answer out of you. It's so, it's quite nice. I don't know. Just focusing on myself, man. I can't really I'm answer. To set you up in a different way there. I know, I know you are. <laughs> uh, I just, I, you know, I can't control those things. I, I think me and George are both gonna have great performances, and whatever happens, you know, you know, everything will fall in place as God plans, and uh, you know, I have faith in that.